What if I told you that one man could see centuries ahead into the future? A man whose visions predicted groundbreaking events long before they unfolded. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, this man really existed. His name was Nostradamus. In today's video, we'll explore the fascinating life of this man, dive into his cryptic prophecies, and see if he truly had the ability to foresee the future or if it's all a series of coincidences. Stick around to discover the story of the man who saw the future. Sure, here's a more engaging and polished version of your script. In May of 1921, a man named Paul Amadeus Dino, after a sudden illness, slipped into a mysterious coma that lasted for an entire year. As bizarre as this may sound, it wasn't the strangest part of Dino's story. When the young Swiss teacher finally woke up, not only was he completely fine, but he seemed to have gained a supernatural ability, the power to predict the future. I know this might sound far-fetched, but the revelations Dino shared after emerging from his coma are things that can't easily be explained any other way. He spoke of things that were unheard of at the time, like a handheld device that could bring pictures to life, something we now recognize as a tablet or smartphone. Even more astonishing, Dino predicted events a century ahead of his time, including humanity's attempts to colonize Mars and even nuclear wars. And keep in mind, World War, I, I hadn't even happened yet. If you're a skeptic, the story I'm about to tell might challenge everything you believe. And if you're already open to the paranormal, you're definitely going to want to hear this. Paul Amadeus Dino was a Swiss-Austrian teacher born in Zurich, with a deep passion for history and classical philology, the study of ancient languages. For the most part, Dino's health was fragile, but nothing could have predicted the strange sleep he fell into one day. It happened without warning. Dino was going about his usual routine when he suddenly collapsed into what appeared to be an ordinary sleep, but it was far from ordinary. His friends and family tried desperately to wake him, but nothing worked. Panicked, they rushed him to the hospital, where doctors could find no clear explanation. He was in a coma, but with no apparent cause. For 14 long days, Dino remained unresponsive while his family anxiously waited by his side. Then, finally he woke up. To everyone's relief, Dino appeared physically fine. But there was something different about him, a change that would soon reveal itself in ways no one could have imagined. Paul Amadeus Dino seemed completely fine after his mysterious coma, and within a few weeks, he returned to his normal life. It was almost as if it had all been a random, unexplainable event. One of those strange things that just happen sometimes, right? But for Dino, this was far from over. Four years later, in May of 1921, Dino once again fell into that same mysterious sleep this time following a brief illness. Just like before, his friends and family tried everything to wake him, but nothing worked. Once again, they rushed him to the hospital, hoping that, like the last time, he'd wake up after a few days or weeks. But this time was different. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months. Dino remained unconscious. Tragically, his mother passed away while waiting for him to wake from this strange coma, but still, Dino stayed in his deep, unexplainable slumber. Then, out of nowhere, in May of 1922, exactly one year later, Dino's eyes opened. He was awake. His recovery, much like before, was astonishing. Physically, he was weak from spending a whole year in bed, but otherwise, he seemed perfectly healthy. There was just one problem, something was off. This time, Dino wasn't himself. He wasn't talking to his friends, his family, or anyone for that matter. He kept to himself, as if hiding something. At first, people thought it might be grief. After all, Dino had been very close to his mother, and waking up to find she had died while waiting for him must have been heartbreaking. But this felt like something more than grief. Dino became increasingly withdrawn, spending his days doing manual labor and burying himself in books about philosophy in the evenings. The only person he spoke to now was his priest. 
This made things even stranger, because before his coma, Dino hadn't been a particularly religious man. In fact, he had been growing skeptical about religion. But after he woke up, something had shifted. Dino suddenly became deeply invested in matters of faith, often visiting his priest, talking about spiritual ideas, and even hinting at something more, something he had yet to reveal. There was a lot about religion and the afterlife that Dino seemed to know intuitively, things the priest could only wonder about. But Dino wouldn't share what was on his mind. A couple of months passed after his mysterious coma, and then he fell seriously ill with tuberculosis. The disease lingered, worsening, until his doctors advised him to relocate to a more temperate city. It was October of 1922, and with no mother and no close friends left in Zurich, Dino felt he had no ties to the place. He decided to pack his belongings and move to Athens, Greece, where he found a job teaching French and German. At first, the change of scenery appeared to invigorate Dino, but it didn't take long for the locals to notice that something was off about him. One day, as he sat in front of the majestic Parthenon, the ancient temple dedicated to the Greek goddess Athena, a young man plopped down beside him. The young man made a passing comment about how, 2,000 years ago, someone might have sat in the same spot, gazing at the same rock. He mused that if they focused solely on the Parthenon, it could feel almost like traveling back in time. Dino immediately agreed with this theory, but he added his own twist. You know, he said, the Parthenon will still be here in 2,000 years. If we stare at it and forget everything else, it's almost like we've traveled forward in time. Then, with a grave seriousness that sent chills down the young man's spine, Dino added, but by then, there will be no barriers around it. They'll have taken them down. The certainty in Dino's voice was palpable, and it was enough to unsettle his new companion. With an awkward smile, the young man quickly excused himself and walked away, leaving Dino sitting alone amidst the ancient ruins. It seemed he wasn't the only one in Athens who found Dino's peculiar behavior unsettling. But there was one person who saw past the peculiarities, one man who admired and respected Dino deeply, George Papahatzis, one of Dino's students. Over time, Dino and Papahatzis grew closer, forming a bond that transcended the classroom. Dino shared many aspects of his life with his beloved student, though he kept one significant experience shrouded in mystery, his time in a coma. However, Dino was about to face much bigger challenges. In April of 1923, just six months after moving to Greece, his tuberculosis symptoms worsened significantly. He began coughing more frequently and realized that his time was running out. With a heavy heart, he started to put his affairs in order, but one unresolved issue lingered his extraordinary coma experience. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, Dino wrestled with the decision of whether to share his enigmatic story. Unfortunately, his memory failed him, making it difficult to recall the details of his coma experience. This uncertainty weighed heavily on his mind until one day, like a fog lifting, the memories surged back. Suddenly, he felt a great relief wash over him, and his excitement was palpable so much so that even his landlady took notice. Seated at his desk, Dino set out to put pen to paper. Over the course of several days, he meticulously recorded his recollections of the coma, striving for accuracy in every detail. What he penned during those intense writing sessions would soon become the cornerstone of a remarkable tale. Music Paul Amadeus Dino passed away in 1924, presumably due to tuberculosis. For 50 years, his name faded into obscurity until 1972, when his devoted student, George Papahatzis, published a groundbreaking book. This book was a translation of Dino's old diary, revealing a chronicle of everything that transpired during his second coma. Dino had entrusted Papahatzis with this diary as practice material, hoping his student could improve his German by translating it into Greek. However, Dino had one crucial instruction. Papahatzis was not to publish its contents under any circumstances. Well, let's just say Papahatzis may have fumbled that particular request 
but his defiance is precisely why we have this story today. Perhaps there's a silver lining after all. As Papa Hatsis delved into Dino's diary, he stumbled upon some early entries that revealed the depths of Dino's heartbreak. He wrote poignantly about his first love, who married another man and passed away soon after. But it was the later entries that truly took a turn for the bizarre. At first, Dino's writing felt cryptic, almost as if he were trying to convey something profound without stating it outright. However, as he approached death, his words began to flow with newfound clarity. Hold on to your seats. Things are about to get wild. According to Dino, on the first day of his coma, he awoke to a group of people peering down at him from a strange room. Outside his window, a breathtaking countryside unfolded, a tapestry of blues and greens that blended together in a mesmerizing way. Soft pink light danced off a crystal on the wall, casting an otherworldly glow throughout the room. Initially, Dino wondered if he had entered heaven, or perhaps one of those planets he had read about, inhabited by intelligent alien creatures. But the realization struck him. He was in a hospital, the strangest, most beautiful hospital he had ever seen. For nine days, Dino lay in bed, trapped by excruciating pain and a foggy mind. But by the tenth day, he discovered he could move around a little. Just three days later, on the twelfth day, he felt almost completely fine, a recovery that was nothing short of astonishing. Yet, what followed would boggle his mind even more. Up to this point, Dino had been sporting a bandage on his head, though he couldn't remember how it got there. When he looked in the mirror, all he saw was the bandage, obscuring his face. Then, a few days later, the nurse unwrapped his head, and for the first time, Dino gazed into the mirror. What he saw sent him spiraling into confusion. He crumpled to the floor, on the verge of a nervous breakdown, staring in terror at the stranger reflected back at him. This man, this face, was completely unfamiliar. Who was he? Dino's panic escalated to the point that the nurses were ordered to keep their distance, leaving him alone with his growing sense of dread. Under the care of two specific physicians, the chief doctor and another Dino found himself grappling with a baffling reality. As the doctors attempted to communicate with him, he realized he couldn't understand a word they were saying. Given Dino's expertise in languages, this was particularly unsettling. He sensed a peculiar blend of Anglo-Scandinavian tones in their speech, but that was all he could decipher, which only added to his confusion. After a few days, Dino managed to calm down and was finally allowed to take walks around the facility, a place unlike anything he had ever encountered. One striking feature was the Great Hall, where everything shimmered with crystal. One day, while strolling across this magnificent hall, Dino noticed a group of doctors and nurses huddled together, whispering among themselves. Although he couldn't catch their conversation due to the language barrier, a few words floated into his awareness, particularly one name that kept coming up, Andreas Nordum. Dino assumed this must be the identity of the man whose body he now inhabited. The more he listened, the more fragments of the story began to surface. From what he gathered, Andreas Nordum had been involved in a tragic accident that had taken his life. Yet, it seemed the doctors had managed to freeze his brain for a period before somehow reviving him. But as Dino realized, revive was a loose term, though they were looking at Andreas Nordum. He hadn't actually returned to life. Dino recognized the absurdity of this situation, and so he decided to keep his true identity a secret, opting to play along with the bizarre reality. Up until this point, Dino still believed he was in 1921. However, during a conversation with one of the doctors, he learned a shocking truth. He wasn't in 1921 at all. He was in the year 3906. This revelation pushed him over the edge into a state of panic. Unless he was the unwitting subject of an elaborate prank, not only had he switched bodies, but he had also somehow leaped forward in time by nearly 2,000 years overnight. Psychologically, Dino was stuck in 1921, but physically, he found himself thrust into the year 3906, a disorienting conflict that rattled him to his core. Ironically, this mental turmoil left him unable to sleep, 
a stark contrast to the mysterious illness that had initially sent him into a deep coma. Not long after learning about the body he now inhabited and the year he was in, Dina was introduced to a group known as the Lectors. These spiritual leaders exuded a regal and priestly aura, and the moment Dino laid eyes on them, he fell to his knees, overwhelmed by emotion. He sobbed, pouring out his heart and confessing his true identity. The lectors listened with empathy, but their cryptic remarks about reality and human cognition left Dino more confused than comforted. After this encounter, Dino met Andreas Nordum's mentor, Joerger, and his best friend, Stefan. These two men became instrumental in helping Dino navigate his new reality. They opened his eyes to the wonders of the future and introduced him to a remarkable device, a box that transformed words into pictures and sound, enhancing his learning experience. It was strikingly similar to our modern day iPad. This device, called the Regent's Wage, became Dino's portal to understanding both the past and the future, allowing him to explore the centuries leading up to 3,906. However, there was one significant restriction. Dino was not permitted to learn about the 20th century. Joerger believed that knowing about a past he could potentially alter might disrupt the timeline. Just to clarify, both Joerger and Stefan were fully aware of Dino's true identity, which made their guidance all the more critical. First, he learned that humanity would face a tumultuous three centuries from 2000 to 2000. During this period, overpopulation and international conflicts would become rampant, creating a series of challenges. Yet, amidst this chaos, humanity would continue to achieve remarkable astronomical feats, recording advancements that would push the boundaries of understanding. The future is nothing short of astonishing. By the year 2024, humanity took its first bold steps in colonizing Mars, and for 60 years, the Martian colony flourished, growing to a population of 22 million. However, tragedy struck when a catastrophic impact event devastated Mars, wiping out the entire human settlement. This disaster deterred humanity from attempting to colonize Mars or any other planets for a long time. Fast forward to the year 2009, and Earth finds itself embroiled in a medium-scale war that would last a staggering 80 years. This conflict wreaked havoc on the human population, especially in Europe, leaving only the Baltic and Scandinavian countries to survive. Perhaps this explains the unique Anglo-Scandinavian blend of the language spoken in 3906. After the fallout from the nuclear war, the human population would decline aggressively until a new world government emerged, bringing an end to the global conflict and marking a new chapter in human history. However, this new regime quickly fell into corruption, largely run by a small group of oligarchs. Welcome to Blessovia Science TV, where we take you on an exhilarating journey through the cosmos and unravel the mysteries of science. We are excited to offer you the opportunity to become a valued member of our ever-growing community of cosmic enthusiasts and knowledge seekers. Exclusive access to cosmic content as a member of Blisovia Science TV, you will gain exclusive access to a treasure trove of cosmic content, including documentaries, interviews with leading scientists, space missions updates, and awe-inspiring visualizations of the universe, live Q, and a sessions with experts. Your membership will grant you the chance to participate in live Q and a sessions with renowned scientists, astronomers, and space explorers Get your burning questions answered by those who push the boundaries of human knowledge. Embark on a journey that spans the cosmos and join us in unraveling the secrets of the universe. Become a Blasovia Science TV member today and together we will reach for the stars. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share. Don't forget to leave your comment.